Femme fatale or homme fatale is a mysterious, aesthetically pleasing and seductive individual whose charms ensnare his or her lovers and bond of irresistible desire, often leading them into compromising situations, danger or even demise. She is a feminine archetype often depicted in film, literature and art, French for fatal woman, woman to die for or deadly woman, who is elusive and enigmatic in nature, but better known for her beauty and charm. A man or woman with this aesthetic is very self-aware, knowing exactly what they want and simply goes after it unapologetically, using every resource at his or her disposal, mental and physical. Hi everyone, how are we doing today? I hope you're all good and having a lovely day. If you're new, welcome. My name is Michelle and this is The Chic Week, where we discuss fashion on a deeper level through the use of art, diary, and social sciences, so you may bring them together in order to develop a true personal style that really embraces you as a unique individual. And view fashion past your traditional surface styles taken up because there's so much more than meets the eye. If this sounds good to you, please subscribe, or if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for joining me here again today. We're discussing all about the femme and homme fatale aesthetic. Through this breakdown, you'll develop an understanding of how to create an image that not only leaves onlookers in awe wanting more, but also how to cleverly use every resource at your disposal, including your style, to achieve your goals, whether that be personal, professional, lifestyle, or purely fashionable. On this note, I must take a moment to say thank you to Charles Wong for collaborating with me once again for the episode. Previously, we had done a fashion and fragrance masterclass where we explored the psychology of perfume and how to establish your signature. But today, we're going to be discussing the Femme and Homme Fatale. It's the inspiration for this video, this fragrance that he's been gracious enough to share with us. It's so well suited to autumn and winter, as well as the upcoming holiday season. It's darkly romantic and sophisticated, yet sensual, warm, and a bit spicy. So, let's get into it, shall we? One of my favorite writers for fashion, G. Bruce Boyer, states, Most people don't take clothing seriously enough, but whether we should or not, clothes do talk to us and we make decisions based on people's appearances. We live in a society that preaches inside is most important, but lives by the notion beauty is better. Often looks get you through the door, but who you are, how you behave, and continue to present yourself can get you the whole building. It's so much more than just beauty. This archetype is the perfect example of this because she's beautiful, sexy, intelligent, and put together. But even though she does have this lethal side, people simply do not care and choose to turn a blind eye to it. Genuine femme fatale or homme fatale is cunning in addition to being desirable. Consider Catherine from Basic Instinct or Angelina Jolie and Mr. and Mrs. Smith. They know how to charm people, especially men. For instance, Vesper from James Bond, Malena by Monica Bellucci. The way they command a room with their presence. I think there is something so freeing to that in the sense that they are not weighed down by other people's perceptions. They are very embraceable of all sides of themselves. They have their sights set on where they're going and their goals, but to get there, you need to look the part as well. So let's start off with the look, the codes of dress. The femme fatale is not like any other seductress in the sense that she has her own style, but it's not about being this cookie cutter version of it. We see so many films with many examples of this archetype, and they all have very different looks in terms of their physical state, their hair, their makeup, their clothing, but there are some style cues across the board to note. This aesthetically has a huge focus on glamour and accentuating body lines at all times. A penchant for fitted dresses, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be wearing bodycon or long gowns all the time. Just something that showcases the skin tastefully and intentionally. It could be whatever you are comfortable with. The clothes aren't chosen because they reveal anything about the personality, but rather because they make her or him feel good and are appropriate for the occasion so that he or she can express their personality themselves. It really creates this element of intrigue, psychologically speaking. A typical wardrobe would include a gorgeous statement coat, style tops, bodysuits, fitted suits, 
midi skirts, robe or nightgown, lingerie, stiletto heels, seam stockings, dark sunglasses, gloves, statement hats, and slinky gowns. Tell makes it known she has very good taste. It's just evident. She looks luxurious herself. And I feel not so keen on the phrase, but it's very applicable here. She just looks expensive. How does someone look expensive? Because it's really not about the price you pay for the piece. Instead, it's more about how you carry yourself. You could be wearing something thrifted and look like a million bucks. There's something about the way that she really embraces life's grandeur and revels in it unapologetically. This could be done through high quality materials or jewelry, even brands of choice. Anything that not only expresses, but establishes her quality of living. A lot of black, which is mysterious and serious. Neutrals that don't convey as much. It's all very blank slate. Deep reds that are sensual, navies that are just very trustworthy in nature, and emerald, which of course is opulent. Darker tones are the go-tos of this aesthetic because it evokes these specific emotional responses. If you are going for that archetypal look, the one that comes to mind when you hear the words femme fatale, definitely the classic and sexy style personalities blended together will provide you with this look. But don't fret if you have another one, maybe it's feminine, chic, or dramatic for instance. What you're going to do is take different garments, maybe, or styling techniques, and infuse that essence into your look. Because the femme or homme fatale is all about being in favor of oneself embracing your innate charms and playing them up in different ways that add this allure to what you already have. The femme or homme fatale is very charismatic and seductive, but what specifically creates this image aside from the clothes? And why does it get her what she wants? The sort of reaction that would attract all eyes when she walks into a room and makes this moment seared into one's memory. We still see references dating back to the 40s film of this femme fatale archetype and continue to see this in modern media. Not only is the femme or homme fatale mysterious and fascinating all at once, but they have something to offer and people want to know what it is. She creates a bond by making herself desirable, positioning themselves in a way where they are not on a pedestal or above the other person in skill or beauty, because we as individuals all have our own unique talents, looks, and skills. What is it specifically that you have to offer and carry this in your mindset? It's so much like on a photo shoot, models will maybe think of a specific moment in their life and bring that emotion out for the photograph, or an actress will turn to something in her personal life to create an authentic emotion on screen. Let's remove this from this specific context and move it into the real world because even on screen we can see how the femme or homme fatale has all these different offerings but in real life it's going to be communicated a bit differently because we are not being filmed there is not a narrative we are creating our own narratives and this is the beauty of this say we are at a networking event and i come up to you i introduce myself and i go hello my name is michelle i'm a stylist and image consultant and you introduce yourself and i go on to say i also do video editing and graphic design and i write and i'm rattling off this big list you're going to be sitting there going Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. In your head, you're probably like, girl, when are you going to stop talking? This is too much. It's a bit gauche, obviously, to brag like this, but also people think of themselves. You don't want to be having this negative impression made. Instead, what you're doing is trying to entice them, to really draw them in and go, oh, I do want to know more. Tell me more about this. Because when you're not putting it all out there, it leaves some mystery there. And it's not about holding everything inside. Instead, you want to change the dynamic and turn it around. So instead, I could approach you and go, I know how important your company image is to you. Do you ever need help with image management or style communication? You're going to go, oh yeah, my company image is very important to me. I'd love to know more about this. Oh, that's your forte. Can you tell me more about this? See how the table is turned there? The presentation is so different, yet the same point gets across. Obviously, networking isn't the sexiest example in the world, but you can really apply this to anything. You can apply this to an insecurity. You can apply this to a talent. You can apply this to a skill. It's something that you can really change the perception of. You aren't putting that into someone else's hands to determine. You can do the same exact thing through your presentation because fashion is a nonverbal universal language. So really think about what makes you unique and the ways you can showcase this. 
what is your goal and how can you position yourself to not be striving for it, but rather attracting it? Now let's move on to styling. So once you've defined what you like about the aesthetic, what you would wear, and the pieces of choice, it's time to style it together with this in mind. Styling techniques would be to contrast your colors, whether that be specifically within your outfit or to your complexion to make your features stand out. Playing with your visual way is also a great way to create more dynamic lines and a silhouette that really highlights your figure in a way that you feel most empowered by. That could be cinching in the waist and bringing out the shoulders to create an hourglass figure if you have wider hips, or dangling earrings that bring out your décolleté. I explained this technique more in a previous video where we talk about looking and feeling good in every outfit. Also, layering is great. We can see in all of those classic movies the way she'll slide off her glove a bit or the way she'll reveal her outfit beneath a coat. It's just that extra touch that adds a grand reveal. Also, mastering your signature beauty routine is a must. To be very extensive, just something that you feel you can do regularly and create this signature look. It could be simple as using hair rollers at night to have curls during the day that add drama to your look. A go-to makeup look that you love to do in the morning. Of course, old glamour would work if that is your thing, but also if you want to do something more modern within this aesthetic, definitely a brown smoky eye or the siren eye makeup trend are great approaches as well. A part of this routine, a signature scent, perfume, or cologne is a must. Fragrance is one of a kind when it comes to styling because of its intangible nature. It has this ability to not merely convey, but also kindle and create profound emotions, very similar to the femme fatale's nature. Just as one's outward appearance may leave an impression on others, so too can the composition of their fragrance, since there is a special connection between the olfactory perception and the limbic system which is responsible for learning, memory, sexual desire, and emotional control. So the fragrance recommendation would be L'Appartement de Madame de Florian by Charles Wong. The scent, it's very mysterious, it's very rich and divine. It draws you in though, it's not overpowering the slightest. And I feel it's inspired by a real life femme fatale, I would say. It's the namesake, actually. He had the luxury of going to see this apartment that holds so many stories, and it evokes this tone. Even the packaging does. I will bring it closer for you to see. So we have that velvet ribbon, and it mirrors the coats of dress of the femme fatale. We also have the wax seal that holds a story. It's mysterious, and the splash of red can be read as dangerous or sensual. But let's unpack this, because as we know, style is derived and forms so much of our identities. As Ralph Lauren once said, I don't design clothes, I design dreams. So let's see how this fragrance embodies the femme fatale and how you can as well. This grand abode is suspended in an eternal moment. It's a veritable treasure trove brimming with these priceless masterpieces that really make up her life story and by extension style. She was a French actress, socialite, and courtesan in the late 19th century in Paris. Liaisons were with numerous influential individuals, including presidents, ministers, and esteemed artists. She was like this very real life femme fatale. However, her most notable recognition stems from her abandoned World War II Paris apartment which was uncovered almost 100 years subsequent her existence. You can almost feel the stories of the walls. It's gorgeous and Parisian, yet dust-ridden, with these books, paintings, and more that would say so much if they could speak. And we can see, even from these photographs, how this fragrance functions within this aesthetic. There's something very compelling that draws you in, yet it's very untouchable. It embodies the power of not just the body and beauty, but also the mind and intellect. It's so integral to modern aesthetics and social graces. You can't have one without the other. The notes specifically that convey this luxurious femme fatale aesthetic are at the top, very similar to entering this room, laurel, absinthe, and bergamot. The middle, which is so immersive, saffron, cardamom, black currants, melon, and pepper, and the base is incense, amber, and vetiver. In this specific fragrance, you can look down to the description for more information or have it serve as your inspiration. 
The next step once you've established this visually is to understand how to produce that aura through your image and your behaviors. Confidence is a huge part of this and your confidence will increase in tandem with one self-assurance. When we believe in our own skill sets and values as people, we exude confidence, which in turn creates a greater aesthetic. A lot of people will shy away from this sort of look, even though they're personally very drawn to it because they don't have the confidence to feel like they deserve it, but you do. And the more that you work on that relationship to yourself, the easier it'll be to put who you really feel you are inside outwardly. It with knowing oneself, recognizing your strengths and weaknesses. When we have this kind of confidence in ourselves, we don't care about what other people think about our abilities or judgment. Those who base their feelings of value on the approval of others and sense of vulnerability to the damaging effects of constructive criticism or peer criticism itself. Genuinely assured people, on the other hand, tend to not seek approval from others. The femme fatale has this to her. She's very standalone, very independent. If a situation doesn't necessarily go to plan, we never see the femme fatale just give up. She doesn't take these setbacks or criticism as personal attacks, rather opportunities. She is more like, okay, this situation did not go well. How can I improve my approach? I wasn't strong enough to execute this well. I need to train harder. It's not just about having a nice body, face, or clothes. It's really in the mind. The woman or man that you meet one day isn't necessarily the same the next. She's always evolving, always moving forward. There's something very high-paced about her, yet her actions are very slow. They're controlled. They're very present, even though her mind is just five steps ahead. This way of thinking stems from an innate conviction in one's ability to affect the outcomes of situations by their own actions. The benefits of this type of confidence are numerous, not just to be attractive, but including strong decision making, enhanced first impressions, and higher rates of overall success, and multiple avenues of life. Now to finish up today, the last point is speech. And when it comes to the femme or homme fatale, less is more. And this isn't because they are holding back their thoughts. Instead, they're saying just enough to get their point across or evoke the desired emotional response. I want GPS and SAC of the canyon and the weather report for the last three days. By not being so careless with her speech or giving it all away at once, people are more inclined to be hooked on every word, to settle down and be quiet so that she can share. In fact, the less she lets on, the better. It's taking the same strategy she uses with her sensuality and infusing it into her speech. She isn't explaining herself or apologizing. She's very intentional with her words. I think for women especially, we can feel the need to want to accommodate others in conversation so much so that we forget to accommodate ourselves. Instead of putting it all out on the table and hoping to gain approval, there's this very push and pull dynamic to a conversation that draws the other person in. I mistake our insecurities for arrogance. Now I'd have normally gone with only child, but um, you see, by the way you ignored the quip about your parents, I'm gonna have to get with Orphan. All right. There is no hesitation when they speak. They have a very specific way of articulating their thoughts and by extension, not putting their emotions out in front. So he or she knows when to distance themselves, but also when to pull someone in or dive in head first. There's this ease about it too. It's very slow, but not self-conscious in the slightest. There's a sharp wit to it as well. The femme or homme fatale is a strong conversationalist. So the final thought that I do want to leave with you today is that when you are admiring these archetypes, don't think about becoming it. Instead, really investigate what makes you drawn to it. Go, why do I like this character? Why do I admire this about her or him? And really look within yourself to see what qualities do I share with them? What do I have that's special in this sort of way? Because it's not about playing this role of the femme or homme fatale. Instead, what you're doing, developing these sort of self-acceptance and assurance as well as aesthetics that bring this archetype out of you naturally. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe, like, turn on notifications and comment. Thank you so much for watching.